The second milestone concerns hunting methods. Reptiles use a very simple hunting method called <coughs> ambush hunting, which involves just three steps. Step one, find a nice place to hide. Step two, uh, wait for something tasty to come close. <laughs> Step three, jump out, grab it, and eat it. That's all it takes. And it's very simple to do. It doesn't require any training or education or anything like that. And so reptiles are instinctively programmed to hunt this way. And it works. Mammals, however, developed a more complex system called hunting. And it involves five steps. Step one, hunt. You prowl around looking for something good to eat. <laughs> Step two, well, you don't go to the refrigerator. <laughs> Step two, stalking. When you find something good to eat, you get down low, and then you sneak forward, trying to get as close as you can without them seeing. Right? Step three, when you get as close as you can to them, you pounce. Step four, the chase. Normally, you're not going to get close enough to just pounce and grab them. You'll pounce and get close, and then you chase them. So then follows the chase, and if you do it very well, step five, grapple and kill. Now, let me point out that this involves a great deal of skill. You may have noticed, let me see if I can go backwards to show you this point. Compare, whoops, too far, there. Look how big the alligator is compared to the wildebeest. He's a lot bigger. Reptiles, uh, uh, this kind of hunting only works when you're a lot bigger than the things you want to eat. However, mammals developed a system that permits them to attack and kill animals that are <laughs> larger than themselves. Now, how do they learn the skills to do all of this? You can see it anytime you watch a kitten. Kittens, wow, <laughs> they go hunting. And then, when they see prey, <laughs> they stalk it. And when they get close enough, they pounce. <laughs> and when they, and then follows a chase, followed by grappling. And we see this all the time it, with kittens. And we say, oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> Those kittens are having so much fun. Wouldn't it be nice to be a kitten and just play, play, play all day long? And that's total bullshit. <laughs> because these kittens are not wasting time. This is the business of life for a cat. This is what cats must know to survive. Have you ever considered the fact that the killing mechanism, the, the fangs of a kitten, are about one centimeter or two centimeters away from the most vulnerable, vulnerable point, the eyeball? Now, if you're going to attack a mouse, let, let's say there were a mouse, relative size, oh, about uh, 20, 30 kilograms. Let's imagine 20, 30, and you're going to kill it by biting it, OK? It's going to struggle. Can you be sure you can bite it to death without getting your eye poked out? How would you do that? The answer is with lots and lots of practice, which is exactly what kittens are doing. So this is how they play. This is not how kittens play. <laughs> this is not how kittens play. This is not how kittens learn. And this is not how they hunt. So this is all part of a system that works. It's very efficient, very effective. And you can see exactly the same thing taking place in the wild, only because they're wild animals, it's not so easy to see as often. Wild uh, mammal carnivores play. They play at grappling, they play at chasing, they play at stalking and hunting. They play all sorts of things. And ma uh, mammal herbivores also play, but they play in a very different way. 
They don't play at prowling or hunting or grappling because that's not what they do. But what is important, if you're an herbivore, is you've got to be able to know how to run fast. You've got to be able to know how to respond when a predator uh, pounces on you. And so what you'll see, especially with sheep, is young sheep will be standing in the middle of the field and suddenly they'll jump up and then start running very fast. That's how sheep respond to wolves. Um, this behavior here, kicking backwards. That's a very good thing to do while you're running. Kick backwards if he gets close. Maybe you'll hit him in the face. They are learning what they need to know to survive. This is play. And let me point out that this milestone is still primarily locomotor, but there is a certain cerebral component when you are prowling, or I'm sorry, when you're stalking an animal trying to get up close, you have to be able to put yourself in his place and imagine what he can see when he looks your way. That's a cerebral task. So what we see with milestone number two is greater cerebral, less emphasis on locomotive. 